add some additional headphone outputs, or maybe get a little more power to your headphones. In this video, I'm unboxing and testing out the Behringer Microamp HA400 microphone amplifier. I'm Zane, and on this channel, I do weekly audio tech tips, tutorials, and reviews to help you conquer the tech and unleash your creativity. And links to the Behringer Microamp HA400 headphone amplifier, plus any other gear I mention in this video, will be in the description. Now let's jump in. All right, so here's what came inside the box. We've got the Behringer Microamp HA4000, the power cable, which is nice and small, and a couple of pieces of information. I'm sure one's warranty info and the other one's probably installation. I'll look at that later. So my initial thoughts of this are it's actually built quite strong. It's built of a solid metal, which is nice, and the knobs actually feel really nice and tight. They're not really loose or anything like that. Feels like a very solid piece of gear. But now let's connect this. All right, so I have it plugged in. As you can see, the LED light is on there. And that made me notice that there is no on off switch for this. So if you wanna power it down when you're not using it, you do have to unplug it. Now for connecting it to your audio interface, you wanna get a cable kind of like this one here. It's a balanced TRS cable. You can see it has the two little lines here. This is going to give you a nice clean stereo sound. If you just use an instrument cable, like a guitar cable, you're only going to get a mono signal going into your headphone amplifier. And a cable like this one will give you that stereo signal that you want. I've included a link to this one. It was fairly affordable on Amazon, but you can use any balanced TRS cable out there. So one end goes in here, the other end goes to the headphone out of your audio interface. You want to turn the volume up to around halfway, maybe a little over half on your audio interface to give it a nice clean signal, but you don't want to go too loud on your interface or things could get noisy. Now I'm going to test this out with two pairs of studio headphones. I've got the Bear Dynamic DT770, which are 250 ohm headphones. They're actually the reason why I bought this headphone amplifier to give it a little more power as my Focusrite 2i2 just wasn't getting it enough. And these are the Behringer HPS 3000 studio headphones. They're very affordable and they're only 64 ohms. So they should be powered by this headphone amplifier, the Focusrite 2i2 or anything like that. I just want to do a test where I have two headphones plugged in. The first test that I want to do is I'm going to listen to the DT770s, but I'm going to have the volume turned all the way down I'm going to turn the volume up on the Behringer headphones that are in the channel right next to it. I'm going to see if there's any bleed over into this channel. All right, so I turned it all the way up and there was zero bleed through over into the other set of headphones, which is very nice. Now the next test I wanna do is to see how much volume I need to power my DT770 headphones. So I'm gonna see how much power I need on the headphone amp and then I'm going to see how much power I need when I'm plugged directly into the Focusrite 2i2. And what I mean by this is how much power is needed to get a nice comfortable signal that I can sit and listen and do my mixes with. So you can see this is where it is on the headphone amplifier. That's how much power I need. Now I'm gonna plug directly into the Focusrite 2i2 and see how much power is needed from there. And just so you know, I did crank it up all the way and it got pretty loud, but there wasn't any of that noise that gives you the ear fatigue. Like when I do crank the headphones on my Focusrite 2i2, I get some noise in there, but these were fairly clean and I really enjoyed the sound of them. So now let's plug into the Focusrite 2i2. So here's the amount of volume that was needed on the Focusrite 2i2 interface. And it is kind of close to where the Behringer is, but the Behringer was much quieter and I could crank it up even more on the Behringer if I really needed to. Whereas if I crank it up more on the Focusrite, it gets noisier and it's not as comfortable of a listening experience. This is a fairly affordable headphone amplifier and if you're feeling like you're starving your headphones and not getting the most out of them, you might want to add something like this to your home studio. Also, if you need more than one pair of headphones connected at the same time, the Behringer Microamp HA4000 might be for you. 
Click here to check out my review of the Bear Dynamic DT770 headphones, or click down here to see what YouTube thinks you'll be interested in next. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more videos from me. Thank you so much for watching. For Simple Green Tech, I'm Zane. Keep creating, and we'll talk soon.